Welcome to the Ninja Tune Podcast. On this month's edition, Jack Smith sat down with Robert Ames and Hugh Brunt from London Contemporary Orchestra ahead of their collaborative show with Actress at the Barbican, where the interview took place. Actress and London Contemporary Orchestra recently released an album, Legios, which we hear about in depth on this episode, as well as touching on other periods of London Contemporary Orchestra's work. They've collaborated in the past with everyone from Radiohead to Frank Ocean, as well as performing the score for a host of films by directors such as Paul Thomas Anderson. Don't forget, please rate and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Orchestra, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Um, as a sort of introduction to you guys, can you um, tell us a little bit about how the London Contemporary Orchestra sort of came into into being? Came into being ten, ten years ago now. We did, um, we did a series of concerts just down the road from where we are now at LSO, LSO St Luke's, and um, I think you and I realised there's a spot for an orchestra. Um, in this country that was really committed to playing new music um, of, of whatever kind, as long as it's like really high quality. So that might be uh, a classical composer, or it might be a really interesting electronic artist like Actress. You mentioned Actress there, and obviously you guys are playing with him tomorrow night at the Barbican. Um, but I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about how that collaboration kind of came about. Boiler Room. <laughs> Boiler room initially, right? Yeah, 2000, uh, late 2015, yeah. I think. And it was quite quite a slow burn process, which was nice. There was a lot of like, creative back and forth, and a lot of space for the yeah for the project to, to grow. But we sat down with Raj at Boiler Room and came up with a list of electronic artists that we wanted to work with. And yeah, actress was at the top of both our lists. And so we started doing some workshops with them, just a small group of players, like improvisatory stuff, looking at specific acoustic and electronic colours and timbres. Um, and then some set, some more kind of set sessions came out of that and some arrangements of old stuff and brand new material, which we were sort of building from the ground up together. Um, and then, yeah, that, that culminated in the first show here at the Barbican, I think February 2016. Yeah, I remember it well. Yeah, the album was it trying to capture some of the energy of the live show or did you uh, always kind of want to commit something to, to record? I'd say that the album's probably fairly far removed from what the live show is. The album's probably a bit more of a controlled controlled environment. It sounds like that too. It sounds it sounds it sounds more controlled. A lot of the tracks sound more controlled. There, there are some, there are some that are a little bit more wild on there. But you can hear, you can hear the ones where there's a real electronic influence. You can hear on some tracks that there's like real freedom and abandon. And then probably on the majority of tracks, I'd say you can, you can, you can hear real control. Actress has talked previously about how kind of environment and landscape inspire and kind of shape his work. Is that is that something you find in your own work? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things we, we love to do is to get outside of 
typical concert hall spaces, so we commission a lot of work for yeah, specific spaces, music to live to live in that space, and we take a lot of inspiration from from venues when um, thinking about what we're going to perform in. And I think for this momentum show, it, the Barbican was a big inspiration for for Darren. So like the obvious kind of brutalist architecture. I think you can hear that come through the music, and then more specifically, he. There's one track on the album that does take found sounds. I went down, went for a walk, and I like, picked up a load of sounds. And there's one track called Gallia B, which is him, our percussionist Sam Wilson, and Gallia B's and Gallia our violinist, who devised this piece that's really, really closely connected to the Barbican and the found sounds in the Barbican. textures and spaces within the album. Can you talk a little bit about the sort of recording process and how you achieved that sort of melding of the electronic and the organic? Well yeah, those all stem from from the original um, arrangements and the starting point was trying to in some sense like emulate electronic sounds and find that synergy so there would be an ambiguity between what Actress was doing and what we were doing and to have those on it both those kind of worlds on an equal footing rather than one supporting the other. I mean, there is light and shade in terms of how, how those roles uh, interplay, but ideally nothing sounds like an acoustic texture or electronic texture. So that led us to explore some, yeah, some extended techniques um, such as plastic bags, like rustling of plastic bags in quite a rhythmic way to create um, a white noise texture or a high EQ'd um, hi hat, like house keys on the tailpiece of the double bass. Um, in terms of like the percussive elements, there's nothing that's conventional there, like you know, just a bass drum and a and a snare drum. It's normally incorporated into the wider ensemble. Um, so that could, for bass drum, for example, that could be thumps on the body of the double bass um, and heavily preparing the piano. So it sounds like a harp or piano that's been heavily filtered and processed. So that's putting blue tack on the upper strings of the piano or weighing down the lower strings, dampening those with books. The same for the marimba, like putting really heavy blankets on the lower notes of the marimba. So um, we recorded all those textures clean, um, individual instrumental lines in a very dry space and then sent those stems to actress to kind of, yeah, reconstitute the process. Some, some of those tracks, it was a lighter touch from him. Um, and you know, he chose to leave it, leave the acoustic stuff as it, as it was. Um, and then other tracks he would process quite heavily and rupture, sort of reshape and turn them on their head.
So uh, who, who was involved in that recording process then? Uh, well, Rob and I were, were leading the instrumental sessions. So we had just each individual player, eight players, um, one at a time for a couple of hours each. And yeah, actress wasn't involved in those sessions. Um, and then nor were we involved too much at all with his process. How many of the ideas on the album um, came out of that sort of rehearsals process? I think everything. Um, yeah, I mean, even even tracks from his back catalogue, you know, we'd spend a fair bit of time workshopping those reimaginings of those tracks. And then obviously the brand new stuff, that was a little bit more of a kind of integrated, robust process. But yeah, everything, everything got a lot of time. It was nice to have the space between, say, the Barbican show and then our Moscow show and then BBC Prom that we did at the Tate Tanks. So there was space for the whole thing to evolve. And this show happening tomorrow night is, is yes, pretty far removed from the original Barbican performance, which is exciting. Did a lot of this come quite easily because you've, you've kind of talked previously about how collaboration is one of the most essential parts of what you guys do. Would you say there's a lot of autonomy for the, the various moving parts within the, the orchestra when you put something like this together? We're in a really privileged position uh, where we get to work with what I think are probably just the best musicians around. Young musicians that really have an incredible knowledge like classical music, but have an incredible knowledge also of the kind of music Darren's making and are genuinely interested in both of those sound worlds mm. and have the ability to improvise and have the ability to listen to electronic sound and recreate that sound. It's probably a pretty kind of niche, niche thing to be able to do, but um, it's an exciting time at the moment now where you hear a lot of contemporary classical music and a lot of incredibly well-written electronic music, just the lines blurring in a really nice, uh, natural, unforced way. And we, we really hope this album for people it does sound like that, like a re really natural coming together of these components. And um, yeah, I hope that people enjoy it like they would any other actress album but they'll be they'll be challenged by some of the stuff as well in there uh, in a good way Previously uh, collaborated with Johnny Greenwood. I was wondering if you could just give a, a sort of brief synopsis of how, how that came about. Uh, early on, we we loved his music. Started playing it um, 2008, the the first load of concerts that I mentioned earlier, and um, yeah, it's grown from then. Mainly, mainly, mainly from playing his concert work, but then kind of being asked to record his film work as well. So. Um, Thomas Anderson movies, The Master, Phantom Thread, we've performed There Will Be Blood Live, Phantom Thread Live as well. We, we did that at the Royal Festival and um, yeah, it was amazing, that was like the European premiere of the film itself, uh, done as a live performance and yeah, Johnny was there, Paul Thomas Anderson was there and yeah, we spent a lot of time and injected a lot of love into it to get it sounding beautiful and as it does when you see the film usually, but I like to think there's a kind of emotional lift with having those live instruments there. And we've performed with him as a chamber group, actually similar similar numbers to what the show is with Darren, uh, seven or eight musicians on a stage uh, with Johnny performing as well, so 
that seems like a kind of sweet spot for for that kind of collaboration to happen. The album feels like a conversation between sort of classical techniques and electronic production. Did this throw up new possibilities you hadn't envisioned? Well, I think that the, the main objective, the starting point is, without going too far into within, in terms of what the instruments we have available and actresses set up, is to create something that sonically is really special as just like raw sound in the room and to really play off the interaction between what comes through speakers, headphones, and then what actress receives from our acoustic instruments, and then in turn interprets that. So just get this spiraling of hybrid sound. But one of the luxuries with putting things on the record and to have that control is that actress was able to, to focus on individual lines and choose how to recolor some of those, some of those individual layers. Um, but ultimately it's about creating a sort of sensation of, of acoustic and electronic sound that, that marries up like, beautifully and there isn't too much, dis well there's not ideally no disjointedness between those, those two elements, those two sound modes. the appeal of this kind of collaboration that expands the sonic palette of both artists a little bit? Probably one of the most exciting things for me, um, just learning from somebody from somebody like Darren, when you're hearing the kind of sounds that he produces, they're not sounds that we hear like as part of our traditional training. So to try and find ways to emulate that on a on a wooden box with strings for example is, is a really interesting thing to do and you can take those sounds and apply them to other kind of musical things that we do we do in life so I think our work with Darren has definitely seeped into a lot of the other work that we do um, like in the film studio and, and in other places.
some of the tracks are sort of acoustic reinterpretations of actress tracks. How did you kind of fall on those? That were they things that you had in mind before before the collaboration, or did they just naturally fit? I think they were tracks that we were that we were keen on, and I'm sure we, I think we had like a short list of ones, and and the actress would indicate which of those he'd, he'd like to revisit um, and reinterpret. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three or four on, on the record are from his back catalogue, and hopefully they're not, you know, they're not received as cover versions or anything. They are like reimaginings where the structure has changed, um, the duration has changed, and of course, you know, the sound world has been flipped, flipped on its head. I think a lot of those original tracks sound really instrumental already as well, like ascending, for example. This a lot of the kind of high and low sustained lines already sound you know, pretty instrumental. Like one of the first sessions we did out in the depths of South London was just Ollie Copes, her cellist, me and, and Darren. And that's what we started doing because it felt like the it felt like the easiest thing to do to take some of those really well known tracks and just see how 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 quickly you could you could recreate the sound before trying to do the co more complex thing of creating new music. How much do you rely on the sort of spontaneity of live performance, or is it kind of tweaking a score or a blueprint that you already kind of had set out from the beginning? Well, it was a bit, yeah, as Rob was saying earlier, it was a bit more controlled for this record because it was individual musicians in the room at the same time. So it was looking to get a few levels of interpretation from what was off the page and pulling away from that as well. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very different setup to having all musicians in the room with actress at the centre in the way that you know, that's the dynamic for the live show. Did uh, you or actress find you had to tweak your process at all to, to fit fit within the recording process? Yes, it was it was not easy. I think it's fair to say. Um, like two two different worlds come together, trying to find a way to come together to create something. Um, yeah, it was it was work. Well, some of the tracks were easier than others. Some of them came some of them came more naturally. So yeah, probably you know those original great tracks that are on the album. They were you know they're tracks that people know and love. So like and, and they're like part of Darren's. DNA, so it's hard to change that too much. But then some of the tracks that are just completely, completely new, that that was much easier. And especially the tracks that were player devised, they're pretty much straight takes with with Darren adding what he does over the top. So that was that was really easy. The live show contains some what some might see. I guess you kind of touched on this earlier as some pretty unconventional forms of uh, percussion using everyday objects. Well, what were some sort of specific examples of uh, that on the uh, record? And do you have anything planned for tomorrow night? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just thinking of the first bar we can show, one of the more extreme sounds was Vicky, our harpist, using a, a milk frother on the lower strings to create this really aggressive metallic tremolo sound. Um, plastic bags, um, the, our clarinetist, um, Max for um, for tomorrow's show, but Harry for the for the record and the first barbican outing, 
mostly plays without the mouthpiece of the instrument. So just blowing a sharp burst of air down the instrument. Um, what else we got? Yeah, blue tech on the strings. Dampening the marimba with blankets, which is actually really hard for a, for a percussionist to, to play when they can't see <laughs> which notes they're striking, but Sam, our percussionist, is an absolute wizard. Um, yeah, then there's a little bit of processing of what the instruments are doing live, coming both from actress who's on stage with us and um, front of house, our sound engineer Simon Hendry. So, um, yeah, it's there are many there are many times when you see the, the ensemble of instrumentalists playing in a conventional sense. There's hopefully always something intriguing and slightly curious. It can be very measured vibrato pulsing of the bows or um, playing right on the bridge trying to create something that's almost like distant um, train track screeches so yeah there's a there's a pretty broad spectrum of, of techniques what are you guys listening to at the moment silence <laughs> well rob's got two two lps on the table yeah, I'm not going to let them tell you what they are because I haven't listened to them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the support acts for tomorrow night, Wicked are listening to Toxic a lot, actually. Oh, Wicked. Um, which is yeah, some amazing of the music that she's making. And then there are the composers that we work with regularly that are always creating new incredible material. Emily, Emily Lebanese Farouche just released a new album. Claire M. Singer released an LP a little while ago that's um, incredible as well. Cellist Lee Coates just uh, dropped a single called Charlotte that was really amazing. Then listened to a load of super old music as well that I'd recommend for people to listen to. Yeah, listen to Purcell, pretty wild. And we're programming a concert at the moment. Yeah, we've, we've both got our, our heads in a lot of stuff like, um, what were we talking yesterday about, Avan Lucio? and Edmund Finnis, who's our composer in association for a few years, Laurie Spiegel, um, and just thinking of the in actress and LCO influences, uh, Spotify playlist that we three of us put together. There's some, there's some cool stuff on there. Like Helena Half. Um, actress had some great, some great choices, Coltrane. Was there any crossover there that you kind of weren't expecting? Were no, able to... It was pretty eclectic, and I think that's just yeah, that's representative of, of all our listening tastes. Darren, Darren put Verez on that, which is yeah, I'm a massive fan of. It's a yeah. piece called Ionization. It's a big, big percussion piece, and it's really interesting that he's been listening to that because I mean the the, the influences aren't super obvious, but they're definitely there in a subtle way. anything in the show tomorrow from the album or is it the the album is in of itself like a piece of work and then tomorrow is uh, then there's a fair chunk of material that we'll be performing tomorrow night that's not on the record um, and so yeah the Lagios feels very rooted to the first Barbican show and hopefully tomorrow is reflective of how the, how the project has evolved and the new material that we developed for yeah Moscow um, Tate Tanks and and especially for, for this this show and it'll look different as well um, with a bespoke installation from Universal Assembly Unit who are in a way trying to you know capture the sound world of the music and 
I mean, so they've been listening to Lagios, but um, we've also been sending them new, new, new material for tomorrow. So hopefully it kind of physicalizes that sound world. Yeah, it's good to be in a room together again, making music, as opposed to doing it as individuals in a recording studio. I think, um, yeah, the, the whole thing really benefits from that interplay between all of the musicians and, and, and Darren. So it's been really great just to work on new material all together in a room. Do you guys, just to sort of finish up, what are your plans for the future? Loads of plans. Got some great shows coming up. Uh, got a prom at the Royal Albert Hall, which is not as stuffy as it sounds. Loads of good music. Um, Shiva Fashareki, Chains, uh, Daphne Oran, and Suzanne Chiani as well. Um, another show at the Barbican, which is going to be a massive orchestra, 90 piece audio visual experience. I'd really recommend for people to come along to that. Uh, we're going to be announcing something exciting that's happening in the summer, which we're not allowed to talk about yet. And there's some really great film soundtracks coming out uh, that we've recorded. Um, not least Tom York's first soundtrack, which we um, had the pleasure of recording recently. Incredible. Well, plenty to uh, look out for. Um, guys, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Pleasure. Cheers, man. Thank you.